Welcome to our lecture online. Going back to trying to represent the various type of crystal structures by tensors, in this case a dyad, we can now take a look at the monoclinic type of crystal structure. The monoclinic crystal structure is such that two of the three angles still have a 90 degree angle, so they're basically cubic in that respect. With one exception, the beta angle here is not equal to 90 degrees, which means that we can basically start with a box and pushing it into one direction, let's say in this case into the x direction, so that the top is parallel to the xy plane, the bottom is parallel to the xy plane, and the sides on this side, the right side and the left side are also parallel, in this case, to the XZ plane and on the other side, the XZ plane. The only difference is that the front side and the back side are leaning towards the x-axis, basically. So they're skewed by an angle such that beta, in this case, would be greater than 90 degrees by a small angle theta. So what does that look like for a crystal structure? Uh, I mean, for the representation in the tensor format. And so what that did was add two more terms. If this was a perfectly cubic structure, then these, everything else would be zero, and you only have a, uh, components along the diagonal, one for pointing in the x direction, one for pointing in the y direction, one for, for pointing in the z direction. Notice that in the y and the z direction, we still have no difference there. The perpendicular to the surface will be in the z direction here and will be in the y direction there. But in the x direction, things have changed now. Notice that the angle here, theta, is a small difference between 90 degrees and beta. And notice that, it, let's say that beta is greater than 90 degrees, so that this face has now shifted forward, there will be a small angle theta here and a small angle theta. Now, we still have the perpendicular to the yz plane, which would be sigma xx. And then we have the component that goes straight into the z direction, which would be parallel to the yz plane as well. But then if we then look at the, the vectors that are parallel to the plane leaning forward and perpendicular to the plane leaning forward, there's a small angle difference there. It's basically like a rotation in that direction. So rotation basically along the y-axis, so to speak. So you can then think of this vector that results, this vector now which is perpendicular to the surface, as being the sum of the component that goes straight out from the xy plane and a component that goes straight up parallel to the z-axis. If we sum these two, two components up, notice that if we want to write it, and I'm looking for a different color, ha, I have my blue pen here, so you can also think of this, the negative of the vector going down like this. So if we add this vector here to this vector, we end up with this vector which is perpendicular to the plane that's being shifted forward meaning a slight rotation of that axis. And so we can now represent that in a tensor format by adding these two terms. Notice that sigma 1, 3 is basically in the x direction plane pointing in the z direction right here. That's this dashed vector going up here. We have another one down here, which of course is the exact opposite. We can say that the sigma 1, 3 is the same as the sigma 3, 1 if we go up here and we want to then point a vector straight down. We can then say 3 into the x direction. Notice that would be, um, there would be a similar rotation about that y-axis. Then we can express it in terms of what we call AC times the cosine of the angle beta, the cosine between those two planes. Now notice we now use letters A, B, and C to represent 1, 2, 3 to represent X, Y, Z. Another illustration that there's a lot of different formats here to represent tensors, which again adds to the confusion, but notice that A squared basically means sigma 1, 1, basically means sigma X, X. B squared means sigma 2, 2 or sigma X, X, and C squared represents sigma 3, 3 or sigma X, X. And these two components simply represent the rotation about the y-axis. So here's a nice representation of a tri or of a dyad that represents a monoclinic crystal structure. And that's how it's used.